Hey game, welcome boy here. Welcome back, and uh, thanks for tuning in. So I've got some. It, it occurred to me the other day that after I put together the wrap up, that uh, we didn't get a chance to do any of the replays. There were a lot of really cool replays that uh, that I wanted to cover, just to go over a couple of very basic things that uh, there are some very cool things that some of the guys did that I wanted to point out, and uh, you know maybe you can learn a, a trick or two from them. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we got so busy talking about um, you know ghost attacks and lures that we didn't get to any of the replays. So I'm going to jump into those right away. Uh, let's take a look at. Um, we'll start from the bottom here. Uh, Mont. So Montresor had a little bit of trouble. Uh, I'm going to start off with just uh, some help with uh, diagnosing. Montresor came in to uh, client chat and was just asking if we could help him. Uh, improve his lure for for this one particular um, battle and you know I, I looked over this to be perfectly honest oops hang on a second let me just get this up and running um so yeah let's just take a look at the way the lure came in first off the trigger range for this uh for this clan castle oops hang on sorry just getting some trouble set up here So yeah, this is the same problem that we ran into with a lot of the different bases, and that's just that the, the trigger range for these units doesn't completely envelop the uh, the defensive structures. So your lure, as far as I could tell, was pretty much perfect. It's just it was incomplete because uh, and this is one of the earlier this was one of the earlier raids before we picked up on the fact that they were stuffing three wizards and then up to seventeen archers in every single one of their um, clan castles. So I would say from a lore perspective, the only thing that you could have done better with this would have been to send in more troops because there's honestly nothing that you could have done to, to, to pull out that entire clan castle. And if you recall from the uh, from the earlier episode, it takes eight. Se they've got to stay alive for eight seconds. That means they've got to go from wherever you deploy them to wherever they need to be, and then last within this trigger range for eight seconds before you can actually. Uh, finish up. Now, despite the fact that uh, you couldn't pull out the clan castle completely, you still were able to uh, to score one star off of this base, which is phenomenal, considering the fact that you had these uh, clan castle troops, uh, you know, rushing around. And again, this question did come up in a couple of raids, and that's if you fail the lore, should you bother, you know, dumping uh, probably upwards of 2,000 uh, Dark Elixir worth of troops. And, um, you know, this is one example where it actually ended up working out. And one star in this context, it, it definitely helped. I mean, we, re we revisited this particular base uh, too many times, but, um, you know, it, it, I'm glad that you were able to drop everything down and just uh, and, and plow through the base and pick up a star. So it's so a nice job there. In, ter in terms of luring, about the only thing that you could have done would have been to send uh, a few more hogs. And we realize that for these bases, it takes upwards of about seven and eight or fewer plus a heal. Uh, but, you know, that, that's up to you to decide whether or not you have the, um, the number of spells to be able to pull that off. <clears throat> so, uh, let's take a look at one more here. Let me see. So this, this raid was Chris. Chris had to come in really fast and, uh, and, and attack two targets. Now, we had a couple of AFKs, so we had him pick up uh, two targets. And right off the bat, back to back, he was able to three-star both of his bases. Um, he did come in, and I believe he did a dragon raid. So for this one, he did a light. Yep, three, three lightning bolts right away. Take that out. Uh, deploy the dragons. Where he chose to deploy the dragons, I believe, was up here. Oh, I remember what I wanted to show you. So notice how many he notice how many he dropped. He dropped eight dragons, and he didn't drop his clan castle just yet. Now this is an important thing to remember with clan castles because, as Chris said, uh, dumping them all in one spot and they they go full on retard right away. But um, Chris did something that is so simple, but so, I mean, it was just brilliant when you think about it. Um, he held back his clan castle and two dragons. See, so now that all of the trash is gone, he sends in one clan castle worth, and this dragon makes a beeline for the center. And then I think he did the same thing with one additional dragon. He, w he wanted to make sure that there was at least one dragon that uh, was planted on the... Um, on the clan uh, on the town hall so he held back both his cc as well as one possibly two dragons and we we, we when we noticed that in clan chat we were like wait that's a, that's a freaking great idea uh you know it seems so obvious but um because i mean how many times have you you know dropped them all in one spot and they do 
they go everywhere else except for the town hall. <laughs> so, um, you know, when it comes to dragons, it seems to me like, uh, you know, the best idea is go ahead and deploy your eight, you know, wherever you want, however you want, but hold two back as well as you, your clan castle so that when all of this is out of the way, um, you've got two units that can just plow straight right into the core of the base. So great job there with, uh, with holding those back. All right, so the next one was uh, Captain K against number 28. Now, Cap I I've been wanting to re uh, I've been wanting to recap a couple of his raids. He's been he's been showing some incredible promise both with uh, how how he approaches his bases and uh, you know how he lures. This this example after reviewing this was about as perfect a lure as possible. But let's take a look at the trigger range for this guy. So, um, Looking at the clan castle, you've got a couple of different ways to do this, but the simplest way to do it would be to just drop a barbarian here, plugging away at that. That's the cheapest way to do it. That keeps your DPS, you know, that keeps you from having to send in troops, uh, you know, your, your, your high value troops to, to do something like a lure. Uh, the other nice thing about this base is that it's a very compact base, so there's no room internally for any of the traps. It makes this a perfect, makes it a perfect um, target for a hog raid. Uh, that means also that you have to be careful on the outside, you know, maybe send in a couple of test uh, test troops to look at, at four by four spots, uh, you know, to test for traps. And the springs are probably uh, almost definitely, you know, places like that, like that. Uh, typical ingress points, you know, where you would uh, attack the, um, the, the, the defensive unit. So anyway, let's, let's take a look and see how he was able to do this lure. So first troop comes down, he argue, uh, aggroes the Barbarian King, and this is important because he's the slowest unit. So you want to get him moving in the direction that you want uh, as quickly as possible so that he's not lagging behind. Now, I mean, you know, it, th that's not a hard and fast rule, it's more of a rule of thumb. Um, but yeah, he dropped his Barbarian here, was able to dump out all, let's see, three, 20 troops out of the clan castle. I think this was, yeah, probably a level four. So there's a uh, bunch of archers and a bunch of wizards. Now watch what he does here. Uh, he's grouping them all into a nice tight package and you know he's alternating his deployment spots to move them left and right until they're in one nice little pocket. He drops his distractions, he drops two wizards. Boom, they're all gone. I mean, that is about as perfect a CC uh, kill as I've ever seen. Um, it, it's so hard to be able to to be able to get them into that position without, uh, you know, losing your cool. And, uh, you know, he was able to do it. He almost looked relaxed doing this. Now, the other nice thing about this base is that um, all of the defenses are compacted in this nice circle around the town hall. And when you find something like that, it's completely acceptable to just send in your entire mass of hogs uh, at one target and then just let them split up manually and then uh, follow along with the heels. Now, in this case, the your two biggest enemies are going to be the splash towers as well as springs. But in this case, there's no springs to have to deal with because they're all on the exterior of the base. And, you know, one unfortunate wizard triggered off a big bomb there. But, um, yeah, in cases like this, it's a completely fine to just deploy everything in one group. Just uh, make sure that you're following them with, uh, with heals and uh, you're paying attention to uh, where the splash towers are and dropping your heals around there. Because he went in there, I believe, with like level three hogs, but he was still able to, you know, completely wreck this base. So great job there with the lure, great job with the deployment, great job with the heals. Uh, three star, a well-deserved three star all around. All right. Let's take a look at Sananor. Sananor has also uh, been coming up to speed with his hogs and just been wrecking bases left and right. I think he's still at level three. He's uh, probably soon move on to level four. Now this base, um, this base is a little bit trickier because uh, you have some good trap placement internally, and these little strips between defenses are the ones that you have to worry about, because there is almost definitely a spring trap uh, between those structures because you know they're anticipating a hog hog attack or even a giant attack or whatever. Um, these will peel off any you know if you send if you send them in in a mass, each one of these springs will take out three. Uh, three hogs like right away. So these are they're a big problem um, These little uh, two by two spaces here are where your Teslas are going to be and uh, So yeah, let's take a look at how he, he ripped apart this base 
So boom, <laughs> it's almost like they know exactly where you're going to come in. But that was a smart move, dropping just one test troop uh, to, to trigger off that bomb, because that could have easily uh, you know, wiped out a lot of uh, troops. So this was, yeah, this was one clan castle that they, that they didn't go by that original rule, that hard and fast rule of stuffing 17 troops, 17 plus 3. Um, but yeah, the lure is pretty straightforward. It's only about five or six troops, so you, he didn't have to worry too hard here. You drop your distractions, drop your Barbarian King for the high DPS, and then I don't know if he had any wizards here to take care of everything, but let's see what happens. Okay, so he yeah he was relying on his Barbarian King. It's unfortunate that he did lose him, but the archers were enough to take, take out the rest of those troops. Now the only, not a criticism, but the only suggestion that I would make here is that um, plan for plan for these uh, clan castles with 20 troops in them. Bring more archers, bring more barbarians, bring lots of wizards. 10 wizards, 11 or 12 archers, 15 barbarians will be enough to cover just about any scenario that you run into. Now, you, you took a couple of risks with this one, which is fine, and it worked out because there weren't that many troops in the clan castle, but if, if he had stuffed 17 troops into here, you would have been in real trouble with just the uh, number of archers that you had. So you dodged a bullet there, but um, still you were able to go through and, and just rip this base apart with your hawk. So nicely done there. And he was able to go for, uh, for a total of six stars against uh, both of his targets. So nicely done there. All right, so next one I wanted to cover. Now this one was a really, really cool one because we were we were covering this in clan chat for probably a good 20 minutes. We found this uh, hog ring slash crab base and we didn't quite know what to do with it. But uh, what's interesting about this is uh, this is one of the bases that one of our own members have. So we immediately knew where, where all the trap placements were. Um, now Munch had, he only had dragons to, to throw up against this, uh, uh, to throw up against this, this base. And we knew we could three-star it. It was just a question of how. Um, because of this exposed AD, uh, you know, we were... The plan was take out this exposed AD, um, hopefully lure out the clan castle, because that was inside of the trigger range uh, of the clan castle, and then uh, lightning bolt that guy. And then you'd only... At that point, you'd only have one... Um, uh, you'd only have one air defense left to have to, to contend with. Uh, so what really makes this base tricky is that if you look at where the um, defensive placement is, they know that the lure is going to come in from this side and that the lure would end up uh, being disrupted by both this cannon and then the hidden Tesla that's right there. So if you were to drop, the, the trick for aiming this is if you were to drop a troop right here because of this cannon placement, you'd completely ignore that AD. You'd go straight for the for the cannon. And if you dropped it just a little bit to the left, it, he would completely ignore that AD and go for the Tesla. That's the way this that's the way this um, defense works. And it's pretty brilliant when you think about it. It took a it took a you know probably a good twenty minutes to kind of figure out the permutations for this and realize what the uh, defender was doing. So at the last minute we called an audible and we said, you know what, you're not going to be able to do this with uh, with a troop. You're gonna have to send in your barbarian king. So the plan was to send in a barbarian king here, take this out hopefully take this out and then move on to the air defense simultaneously triggering the um, the clan castle for potentially a uh, you know try to drop them somewhere in the vicinity of where that lightning bolt was was going to end up um, it ended up not being an issue but you know we'll see that in the replay so anyway just to recap uh, the B, drop the BK drop some hogs uh, and then once that AD is down lightning bolt this guy and then start your attack coming in from this um, coming in from this direction. Now the other thing that we, we did cover uh, and this was something that we picked up on Chris's raid was hold hold your your you know two or three dragons back. So you know drop as many dragons as you want. Um, and part of the issue with this base is that there are so many structures spread out that you know that's exactly what the dragons will do. They'll just move around the exterior of the base all the while with these uh, air defenses peppering away. And one of these it can absolutely take out four dragons if you're not careful. Um, so the plan here was, you know, drop drop your string, but then hold two back uh, once it's clear to send them directly against the, um, the, uh, the town hall. So let's take a look at this replay and see how that worked out. 
we had discussed this probably for a good half hour in clan chat, and let's just see how he was able to do this. So yeah, first attack was right on the clan, right on the cannon, and then he drops a CC full of hogs to go right against that air defense. Uh, once that's done, they um, move over to the wizard tower and then uh, dump the clan castle out, which is fantastic. He lightning bolt that a AD, so that's down. And now the dragons are doing exactly what we thought they would do, and that's starting to spread out. So he dropped them all in a group, and they're, they're all starting to move kind of in that direction, and then into the inner core. But they'll start to peel away even more. But notice, um, he's only got one air defense to have to deal with. The dragons are in a nice cluster in that corner, but now here they, you know, they're going full-on retard and starting to go around the base. Um, let's see what happens here. And bam, so there, there's the reinforcements. So he sent uh, those two dragons in just to make sure you know, just in case. It, it, it's always good insurance to hold them back, you know, just in case uh, the, the dragons don't do what you want. And, you know, the difference between eight dragons and ten dragons is not that big of a deal. But you want to make sure that the, you know, if you're going to do a dragon raid, hold two or three back and then deploy them when everything is clear and they have a straight path to the town hall. So great job there with that execution. That was perfect. He was able to score his three stars on that match. The last one is. Let's see if I can find this guy's base. Now DZ has he's uh, he's a higher level town hall nine, and he's starting to come into his hogs. So we've been having him practice against lower bases just to get his strategies down. And uh, you know he has a few attacks under his belt, but uh, but he's still learning, and you know he's he's absorbing. Uh, now in this case, let's see, clan castle, trigger range, ton of, there's a ton of opportunities for this. And, you know, the problem with town hall leads is that you only have so many structures to deal with and only so many walls. But um, you have plenty of targets here to be able to pull in, um, you know, to be able to, uh, to lure this clan castle out. But the two most obvious ones that, that uh, stand out are this guy, this guy, and this guy, because there's no question. But uh, the things you want to be worried about are spring traps here. Uh, Tesla, Tesla, and possibly a big bomb or two Teslas. Definitely a spring trap there, and some air bombs there. Spring trap there. So yeah, I mean, bearing in mind where all of those pockets are, um, this guy, this guy, or this guy would be the best candidates for a trigger. So let's take a look and see what he did. Right, so he went for, oh, the Wiz Tower. Okay, that works too. Uh, let's see, was he able to get all of them out? I see two wizards, so yeah, it looks like he was able to get them all out. He's starting to pull them down into where? Into the south, and let's see what you deploy to take care of, of this. <clears throat> Okay, yeah. So you drop your wizards right away, and um, that that's a problem. Again, not a criticism. The only suggestion that I would make is uh, you, you need your wizards as ancillary DPS to survive uh, the initial attack because they're really what's going to end up cleaning up the base. Because you will run into scenarios where you won't have any hogs left, or maybe one or two, and you'll be relying on these guys to, to, to you know finish up the base. So just remember that when you're going in, about 12 archers, 15 barbarians, 10 wizards, drop your barbarians, drop your archers in front of them, and then drop the wizards. Uh, as, as Captain K showed earlier on, all you need is two wizards in a tight pocket to be able to wipe them out. So um, unfortunately, a lot of the wizards that you had there got wiped out in the initial round. You want to make sure that you drop distractions in front of them before you drop the rest. Uh, and, you know, the, the thing about hogs is that, uh, again, it, you know, it's not rocket science. You drop them in a good spot against the right base, they're going to wreck the base. It doesn't matter. It almost doesn't matter where you deploy them. Uh, but the, the trickiest part is the lure. And if you get the lure wrong, the entire raid fails. Or, you know, at, at worst it fails, but at best, you know, maybe you score only one star. And uh, see, this is exactly what I was talking about. You know, you run into a situation where you only have about four or five left. And uh, he did save his CC as a steering component uh, to send in some level 5 hogs, so good job there. Um, luckily, he's got some high-level heroes, so they were able to come in here and, and clean this up. But, uh, you know, this, this was a little close in that respect, and you'll find that at this level, 
Uh, there's very, very little room for, for error, and you always want to make sure that you, you err on the side of, um, you know, going with a little bit more, going with, you know, some extra DPS than less, because, you know, you, don't want, you want to make sure that you have enough to, to deal with the clan castle, and, um, and have enough left over to, to finish up the base. So, again, great job there. Uh, let's see. Now, what uh, MJ was able to three-star a base with Go Wipe, so this was pretty fantastic. Let's take a look at what he did with this base. Oh, so this was the base that we had a lot of trouble with, the uh, the seemingly unfinished base that we had to revisit about seven times. Um, again, nothing too crazy here. Just grab the Royals, deal with them. Uh, the thing about MJ is he's got a lot of troops, so you know he can probably he can absolutely do this in stages. So BK's down, uh, AQ's down, we are clearing trash, golems are starting to deploy, here come the wall breakers, raged to go in, uh, wizards right behind the golem, and here come the pekkas. He's got a lightning left over to, uh, to deal with the clan castle, which is completely fine, but he's got so much DPS in there that uh, you know, he's not worried, I'm not too worried about this, and he's also got pretty high level heroes. So they make a beeline straight for the town hall. That town hall's down in two hits. Uh, and at this point, it's, it's really just a matter of just ripping through the base. Now mind you, this was, you know, this was a low level go wipe against a, a decently upgraded uh, town hall eight. Um, it's hard to expect three stars from this, from, from everything. It's possible, but uh, you know, it's definitely not, um, it's more the exception than the norm. <laughs> It's a lot of DPS and, and their, their, their uh, upgraded troops, so you know, he was able to pull this off when we needed it the most. So great job there with that, and um, you know, I'm sure we'll be seeing more of this uh, in future raids. So, so yeah, again, just to recap the, the lessons learned from this, um, if you want to go in with, uh, if you're unsure about what troops to take, and you don't know how many troops are going to be in the clan castle, just assume for the worst, you know, at least in the first round, assume the worst, go in there with about 12 archers, 15 barbarians, 10 wizards, that, that would be the minimum that I would send in against uh, any clan castle. And then once you, do, you have them dealt with, you're free to go and do whatever you need. Now on the second round, once we know what's in the clan castle, you can tweak those numbers a little bit. But for first round attacks, definitely go in with a pretty sizable contingent of troops to be able to deal with them. Uh, the other thing is if you're doing a dragon raid, hold two back. Uh, hold a couple of dragons back so that when the trash is gone, that uh, you can send them straight at the town hall. It's something that, I mean, it was so simple and elegant and just escaped all of us. Um, uh, oh, you know what? I'm sorry, there was one more, and that was Reed. We have to take a look at Reed's Reed. <clears throat> just give me a second while I find this. Sorry guys. Where is your attack? Okay. So here's Reed's raid. Now what I really liked about this was uh, the way that he cleared trash here. So let's take a look. So clan castle down, clan castle down here to take trash there. Uh, Barbarian King here to take out Trash here. Dragons in a line here. So they go straight into the base. Or rather, uh, dragons in an L shape, in, a, in, a, in an arc, so that they go straight into the base. And, uh, you know, a couple of guys have called this kind of a, pinch, a pincer maneuver. You know, you, you deploy the sides first, and then you deploy DPS last, so that they all cluster and then head towards the... Uh, the town hall. Now at this point he saves his spells and he's got a nice tight, tight package of DPS. Now these guys work the best when they work in groups. If you only have one dragon on one structure it's not as nearly effective as having three because uh, then you know they can destroy that structure and then continue to move on deeper into the base. Uh, but he was able to save his his rages for um, 
you know, that cluster of hit points in the, in the core and was able to, to take them out pretty, pretty quickly, pretty effectively. This last, uh, wow, this last air defense is starting to give him some trouble, but almost did not pull that off with that last AD there. Uh, safely nestled between those two, sto two storages. So yeah, uh, again, Lore, uh, you've got su good suggestions for what to, to bring uh, to, to handle your, your clan castles. Um, we talked about steering using uh, your clan castle full of hogs. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna hog, uh, request high level hogs in, in your clan castle and use them as a steering component to push your crew in the direction that you want them uh, to go in. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if there's anything else that you guys want me to cover, just let me know. But for the most part, um, these were the good lessons learned from, from, this, uh, from this raid. Definitely take these into account for, for the next one. We're going to start up another search on Thursday for, uh, you know, for a war that will end on Saturday. And you guys will be able to have your Sundays back. So, um, yeah, that's it. Pretty much, that's pretty much it. I'll see you on the next raid. Thanks.